Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now the beginning of October and we're not only getting closer to, of course, a lot of other Star Wars shows out there like Tales of the Jedi, Mando 3, and let alone Ahsoka, which by the way is the most anticipated show for next year. We also have a lot of other projects that are being worked on behind the scenes between Favreau, Filoni, and new creators coming on board to really propel Star Wars in a brand new direction. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars updates. Also, by the way, guys, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support. It is greatly appreciated. Now, one thing about the new Star Wars universe between Lucas, Favreau, and Filoni is that they are going to be taking a lot of key elements from the Thrawn trilogy and throwing it into Mando 4 and the Ahsoka Tano series, of course. Now, given that there's a lot of other things happening between, of course, you know, Favreau and Filoni to really use this as a great way to kind of build their story from the ground up, they're also going to be taking key aspects from shows out there, of course, like, of course, you know, Bo-Katan series and other aspects that will utilize Star Wars Legends. And that's the biggest thing to look forward to as well. Now, Celebration is going to be announcing all these new Star Wars shows and a whole lot more on the horizon. Now, with that being said, what's even all the more intriguing has a lot to do with the fact of what they have been up to behind the scenes and exactly what's been going on with the Obi-Wan Kenobi series reboot, or the soft reboot to be very specific. Now, I don't know if you guys knew this, but the Kenobi series actually was supposed to be a trilogy before it, and it had a lot of storyboards that were left abandoned by Stuart Beatty, a lot of which are now going to be used for the Kenobi series reboot. Now, of course, given that Bob Chapek has been putting some extreme limitations on Kathleen Kennedy's work for Star Wars lately, both Favreau and Filoni have been very busy with the new Star Wars TV shows currently in the works for Disney+. Plus. Now, it's described that behind the scenes, the second season of Obi-Wan Kenobi is heavily in the early stages and will be treated as a soft reboot and taking abandoned storyboards from the Kenobi trilogy that never got made that have many surprise situations in those planned stories that will be used. Now further, it's described that for the second season of Obi-Wan, Favreau and Filoni are taking another big storyboard illustration and finalizing it to be used for the script that is said to involve tension between both Darth Maul and Darth Vader. Now the storyboard is said to involve a moment in which Palpatine's hologram is actually seen projecting in front of Vader inside of his castle on Mustafar. This is where Palpatine talks to Vader about his apprentice that came before Count Dooku. Darth Maul and, of course, Maul's plan is to actually steal from the Empire and to sabotage a specific plan about cloning chambers. Now, it's noted that the storyboard involves a hologram of Darth Maul in front of Vader, where Palpatine informs Vader the rise of Crimson Dawn, which is Maul's crime syndicate. I want to stop here quickly for a second. Now, for those of you that don't know, uh, Maul actually does have a crime syndicate. I I'm sure that most of you have seen the Solo A Star Wars Story film, which really uh, directly indicates that and puts that actually into the canon. Uh, but with the Kenobi series, we didn't really get to learn all that much about the rise of Crimson Dawn and even some of the early stages of the surrounding, you know, uh, assassins that come within that story. Now, given that Darth Maul is a very prominent figure in the animated series, they want to make him a prominent figure in live action Star Wars TV shows in the very near future. That's the overall plan right now. And that's what Stuart Beatty wanted to do with the Kenobi trilogy, was that he was going to make Maul very prominent as one of the villains that kind of goes against the other villains. And that, I think, is a very interesting story. The fact that you would have this character that once served under Palpatine trying to sabotage him and really destroy his empire from within, or at the very minimum, taking bites out of the, out of the empire by stealing very important aspects and stuff around those lines. And we kind of got that side story in Solo, where Beckett was kind of planning to do the same, and how that basically was 
all under Maul because Dryden Voss served Maul. Now, moving forward from all of that too, this is where things begin to really progress for the Kenobi series soft reboot. So, the storyboard for this moment entails that Vader orders a series of bounty hunters to try and find Darth Maul to track him down and that if they fail, he will deal with him himself. Favreau and Filoni are said to be slowly building and teasing a big journey toward a moment in which both Maul and Vader will come face to face and perhaps even engage in a lightsaber duel. Now this is John and Dave's dream and has been for a very long time, but they want to make it realistic and not forced for the fans. Now I would like to hear what you have to say about that quickly before I get to the next thing here is that how do you feel about Vader and Maul either confronting each other or at the maximum engaging in a saber duel because this is what John and Dave are building towards in the soft reboot of Obi-Wan Kenobi and other surrounding lore. And I think, you know what, if it's executed well, if it's handled carefully, it can work. It may sound a little off, it may seem a little off when you visually think about it in your head. Darth Maul and Darth Vader fighting face to face. It's something that nobody would really expect. We got something like that in the comics, but it was a vision. It wasn't really, you know, the real version of Maul. So there's a lot of possibilities. How they're going to actually pull that off, it all depends on them. And these specific bounty hunters that Vader orders to go against Maul, we're not quite sure who they are either. Because, you know, there's a lot of other characters that will be joining the Kenobi series reboot and how they want to actually create and spawn brand new Star Wars characters and lore that comes with it all. So that brings us to the next thing here is that Favreau and Filoni have bigger plans than ever before when it comes to Star Wars. Now, with the Kenobi series reboot, all right, they want to make sure that it's going to stay in line with St Stuart Beatty's vision. Stuart Beatty is said to actually come back for Kenobi season two to actually be a co-writer with Favreau and Filoni to really steer things in the right path. Joby Harold is not coming back as a writer. That's all done. Deborah Chow doesn't want to direct again for obvious reasons. You know, the show got a lot of criticism. It's not good for her history. And I get it. You know what? Some fans like this show and that's fine. I understand that. But I myself thought that the show had a lot of flaws. It had a couple of good moments here and there. But to me, the show is very heavily flawed. That's just my opinion. But when we look at the Kenobi show, it could have been a ton better. I think that they shouldn't have squeezed it into six episodes, if you want my honest truth. So, moving to the next thing here is that Favreau and Filoni want to also make sure that this is going to actually tie directly in with future plans for Crimson Dawn in the planned Star Wars Underworld series, which, by the way, is going to span through multiple years, showing us the infancy of Crimson Dawn leading up to the rise and eventually, of course, the fall of the Crime Syndicate. They want to explore the fall of the Crime Syndicate, which wasn't really super explored in live action at all, and not even in the comics specifically, you know, so we have to learn more about that. Now, of course, this is a big deal for the fans. Let me know what you guys have to say about all this below in the comments, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.